Now about three days ago, I was sitting at the Sydney International Airport getting ready to board a flight for work. Being productive was something that I was going to try to do. So ideally, I wanted to get a couple of machine learning resources that I was going to be able to use and read and consume on the plane to ideally further my knowledge. Now that didn't exactly happen. I kind of got a little carried away with the in-flight entertainment, but nonetheless, it was the thought that counted. Now this got me thinking, what are the key machine learning resources that I typically use to go on ahead and learn those topics? And this is exactly what we're going to be going through in this video today. What are the key machine learning resources that you can use to be able to learn machine learning? What's happening guys, my name is Nicholas Renault and in this video we're going to be covering the key resources that I use to learn machine learning. And we're going to do this in sort of like a practical story based setting. So how do we go from complete idea and absolutely having no idea as to what it is that we're going to be learning all the way through to a full blown implementation. So sort of what you see on the channel in terms of different types of projects. So let's jump right into it. So you've decided that you want to go on ahead and learn machine learning. Where do you get some ideas? How do you find projects? This is exactly the first phase that I typically go through when it comes to learning machine learning. There's two key resources that I tend to find myself coming back to over and over and over again in order to build and learn new things inside of machine learning or regarding machine learning. The first is Reddit. Now, you might not think of Reddit as a resource that you go to to be able to learn hardcore and machine learning and deep learning but it's a great source of inspiration for different ideas and different projects that you might want to tackle. There's two key subreddits in particular that I tend to use and frequent. The first one is Learn Machine Learning. So if you go to that subreddit, it's absolutely great for beginners to be able to get some advice and find other people that are learning the same type of thing. Now, the other subreddit that I tend to go to is R Python. So Python obviously being the fundamental language that is used when it comes to building deep learning and machine learning projects, you tend to find quite a fair few advanced machine learning projects on there. So they give you a ton of inspiration when it comes to finding different machine learning projects or different ideas that you can go and learn. So that is Reddit. Now, the second resource that I tend to use when it comes to finding different types of ideas for machine learning are blogs. Yeah, I know it's a little bit old school, but there are a ton of great blog articles out there that go into really, really deep detail as to how to learn or master a particular topic. There are a few blogs that I actually read very frequently. The first one is Towards Data Science. So Towards Data Science is a medium blog and it's a great place to find a ton of different articles on all things data science, not just machine learning. It might be things like how do you perfect a particular type of data analysis. It might be a specific type of machine learning algorithm and they might actually do a deep dive in it. Towards Data Science is a brilliant resource when it comes to finding different types of ideas and looking at state of the art and what other people are doing. Some other great blogs that I tend to read as well include the KD Nuggets blog. So this is a long running blog and tends to have Slightly more technical content on there, but is great nonetheless. The other one is Analytics Vidya. So this is a blog based out of India and has a ton of resources. Like I am talking an absolute ton. There are blog posts on just about any topic you can think about. And there's frequent challenges as well, which seems to boost the number or amount of content that you'll tend to find on there. There are a couple of niche blogs that I also frequent. So Particularly when it comes to computer vision, I find myself often coming back to Pi Image Search. So this is a blog which was actually developed or written by Adrian or Dr. Adrian Rosebrock. So there is a ton of great computer vision based content on there. So um, if you wanted to learn things like OpenCV or object detection or key point tracking or working with GANs, there is a brilliant resource or plethora of resources available on Pi Image Search. For general machine learning, I tend to find myself coming back to Machine Learning Mastery by Jason Brown Lee. So this is a, another blog resource which has more generic machine learning content. So it gives you a ton of ideas for how to tackle specific problems, how to fine tune and optimize your models. Again, another great resource when it comes to generating some ideas. So now that we've got an idea, how do we actually go about implementing it? The first resource that I'd recommend when it comes to looking at implementation is Papers with Code. So let's say, for example, you wanted to build a GAN which allows you to generate faces or determine whether or not a particular person is happy or sad. So you can sort of see it on the screen there. This is actually an image classification model built using deep learning. Let's take that for example. 
What you might wanna do is try to find a particular research project that has already gone and done that. And this is where research papers really come into their own. Learning how a particular person approached a problem, the challenges that they might have faced, and solutions to those particular problems. Finding great research papers to serve as a reference base for your project is a great way to get started when it comes to learning machine learning. And a great resource to find those research papers is Papers with Code. So if you actually go to the Papers with Code website, you can actually find a ton of different research papers sorted by their particular subject area or subject matter expertise. And the awesome thing about it is that it typically has an associated code base with it. So once you've found the research paper, you can actually go and take a look at the code that's associated to that particular implementation or that particular architecture, which simplifies the next step a ton. Because the next resource that I recommend when it comes to learning machine learning is GitHub. So if you actually jump onto GitHub, you can actually search for a particular type of architecture. So if I wanted to search for image classification or object detection, or right now I'm actually working on a project which is based on the cycle GAN architecture, you can actually just type in that particular architecture, so cycle GAN, into GitHub, and it's actually going to rank the best GitHub repositories associated with or and their associated code which you can actually pick up and at least use as a reference architecture. The nice thing about Papers with Code is that it tends to automatically link to GitHub repos which are associated with that particular type of deep learning or machine learning. So it sort of simplifies that search for you, but using Papers with Code and GitHub in tandem will help you find a ton of resources to be able to kick your project off. So most of the resources that I've provided so far are very much practical in nature. They don't really go into too much theory. And what I've found over time is that I like to start off with practical resources. So things like GitHub repositories and practical implementations or blog posts. But then I like to go back and actually take a look at some theory based resources just to bolster up what it is that I'm doing and at least establish a base level of knowledge that's gonna serve me well when it comes to trying to explain how these concepts actually work. Now, for that particular aspect of learning, I really do rely quite heavily on books. Let me actually go and get some. So there's a bunch of books that I've read over time. And again, I haven't started off with all of these just from the get go. I've actually built up my little collection. It's still very little at the moment, but this is something that I'm planning on continually investing in, in order to further my knowledge. The first machine learning book that I actually invested in was this one. So Deep Learning with Python by Francois Cholet. I highly recommend this book and it serves as a great basis for actually establishing your learn machine learning capability in Python, which is obviously the language that I prefer to code in. The other machine learning book that I also found really, really great is Hands-On Machine Learning with Scikit-Learn. I don't know if that's going into focus. And this one is by Aurélie Geron. This is an absolute great resource if you're just getting started completely from scratch, like have absolutely zero data science knowledge and really just wanna get started. There are a bunch of others, so I'm also reading data science from scratch. Let's get that into focus. And Approaching Almost Any Machine Learning Problem by Abhishek Thakur. Now, the only thing that I've noticed with books is that it's hard to know which book is going to be a useful resource versus which one is just going to be a random reference item. So something that you'll open once and never really come back to. And this is where the next resource really comes into its own. Now, it is a paid resource, but I think it's worth investing in if you are going to be really delving deep into machine learning and data science and deep learning and all that good stuff. The next resource is an O'Reilly subscription. So if you think about a large majority of books, take a look at who's publishing this. O'Reilly and O'Reilly. Now, if you actually go and get an O'Reilly subscription, the awesome thing is that you can actually go and preview these books. Well, not preview, you can read them all completely online. So what I tend to do is I'll grab my iPad and I'll actually go through and download a whole bunch of resources that I might just wanna quickly browse and scan through to determine whether or not it's a resource worth buying. I tend to like reading the books, the physical books themselves, because it's just a great reference material. You can just grab it up quickly and start delving into it. But having an O'Reilly subscription really establishes or gives you a base to go through and read and see whether or not that resource is, is going to serve your problem correctly. So if we cast our minds back to our CycleGAN problem, I was actually able to go into O'Reilly, 
type in CycleGAN and find a bunch of resources from published authors that are going to help me solve my problem. I tend to find as well that the content that you get from these books is of a ridiculously high level of quality. So the authors tend to have gone through a ton of work to actually go and produce the code, produce the content and write it out. So more often than not, it's going to work. And if it doesn't, then you'll actually find updated code in their GitHub repos. So O'Reilly really comes into its own for that. And while I was actually at the airport, I was actually downloading a whole bunch of different books. So right now I'm bolstering up my linear algebra and my descriptive statistics capabilities and downloading a couple of books was a breeze. I could actually just jump into O'Reilly, download those and actually use them as part of offline viewing. So highly recommend O'Reilly there. Now, let's say you don't want to go and invest in an O'Reilly subscription. And quick shout out, I, this is completely unsponsored by O'Reilly. It's something that I actually use in my day to day life. So completely unsponsored, just wanted to make that clear. But let's say you don't want to invest in O'Reilly. What are some other resources that you might be able to use? Well, the nice thing about deep learning is that it is a great open source community. So there's a ton of content out there. So assume that you found your idea, you've actually gone and found some implementations maybe on a blog post or you've gone through O'Reilly, found it inside of a book, you wanna fine tune it and actually go and build out a particular problem. So you've built a problem and you need some help. How do you find different reference architectures or different reference code based on the implementation library that you're actually using? So let's say we've gone and built a deep learning model, how do we actually find some support for that? Well, if you actually go to those library pages, so if you go to the Keras page for Keras implementations, or if you go to the TensorFlow page for TensorFlow implementations, there are a ton of tutorials and guides that actually walk you through how to approach a particular problem. So for my CycleGAN project that I'm working on, I actually went to the Keras blog and found a full-blown implementation that had been written by someone out there on the interwebs, which was actually a really great implementation because it allowed me to create a or transfer an image of a horse to a zebra. Highly practical, I know. But nonetheless, there's a ton of great resources out there. So if you go to the Keras examples page, the TensorFlow tutorials page, and the PyTorch examples page, there are full blown Python implementations of these projects. And those in a nutshell are the main resources I use to learn machine learning. So if we have it starting all the way from the top, it's really about finding ideas. And if you go to Reddit or some of those blog posts I mentioned, those are absolutely brilliant. Then we really wanna to try to find resources that give us examples of those implementations. And for those, I tend to use papers with code and GitHub. Then in terms of bolstering up our fundamental knowledge, typically I'm looking at different types of books. And in order to streamline that process, I'm usually going to O'Reilly first to grab a bit of a reference architecture to determine whether or not that's actually going to be great. And then in terms of actual library support, if you go to the pages, the Keras pages, the PyTorch pages, or the TensorFlow pages, there's a ton of great information on there. The other thing that I also wanted to call out is that if you've got a particular problem, going to the library's documentation page is going to help you a ton. So say for example, you were going to be doing OpenCV projects or computer vision projects. Going to the OpenCV documentation is going to serve you well. If you're doing something in the transformer space, going and taking a look at how Hugging Face approaches it is also going to give you a bit of a heads up. But those in a nutshell are the key resources that I use to learn machine learning. Let me know what you thought. Thanks so much for tuning in guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, hit subscribe and tick that bell and let me know what you thought. Are there any other resources that you use that I may be left out? How do you actually go about learning? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks again for tuning in guys. Peace.